you know, and uh, I really appreciate what you guys are doing because it's like a documentary is something that happened today. We, we hope doesn't need, but uh, can support and help in some, uh, with the same community in the future. Because the situation, like, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't have a wrong, it doesn't have a right. It just, like, it's a new situation to everybody else. There are a lot of people who misunderstand uh, uh, the, the information, you know. But, but one thing is important, it's like, it's talk to people and, may, and, and take the different point of view, take a different perspective to people share what they experience, what they taught. And we only gonna know in the future what's really is gonna happen. But as a documentary, like you're gonna be, you're gonna, you're gonna go through all those steps and it's gonna be part of our history later on. You know, it's a, it's a action that, a, that, a, that you guys are putting together. It's about the whole community stepping together against something, you know. And, and I think this will impact so much. I think there's a, this, is, this is gonna impact, it's gonna change so much in the future for everybody. If you're anything like me, Jiu-Jitsu plays a significant role in your life. So when your academy was suddenly shut down due to state order lockdowns, you were probably left looking for answers due to the physical nature of Jiu-Jitsu. It soon became clear, Jiu-Jitsu would likely never be the same again. In this episode, Checkmat founder Leo Vieira gives us his perspective on Jiu-Jitsu in the COVID-19 era. Right when everything starts, you know, like uh, I, I, I put myself in the situations to think about everybody, you know, so I'm the one, I don't expect uh, people give me their responsibility, but I take the responsibility because uh, I like to be the, I like to help. It's, uh, I think that, you know, I know like the purpose of my life is to help people. And, I, and I, early I understood that Jiu-Jitsu was not just a martial art. It's the way that I communicate. It's the way that I, I be talking to people. I was, very, I was very shy as a kid. And Jiu-Jitsu helped me to, that would help me to make, to, to make friends and communicate myself, to express everything. So uh, I believe so much in this. I, the, way I, the way I look, the way I take care of my school, the way I take care of like, the team, is the same way I take care of my family. So the position that I'm in my family, I'm a, I'm a husband, I'm a father, so the way I have to take care of my wife, and my kids, protect them, is the same, is the same dynamic, is the same responsibility that I feel in my school. And of course, like, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the guy like, who knows everything, so, uh, but, uh, but uh, you have, you have always, like, if you, as a, if you as a student, you're gonna look to the professor to say, hey, what's the next step? What should we, we do? So the professor, if he doesn't know what the step is, in situations like that, it's very normal. So they're gonna look to the, to the leader, to the team, or to friends, or, hey, what are we gonna do, you know? So, and you have to get the answer. So people expect me to have the answers. So Leo, let's go to the beginning. I, I was in China in November. Over, when I was there, so, so of course, like, they, they, they have the problem yet, so they find out later. And there was a report that like, uh, everything was closed, business was closed, there was quarantine in their own house, like really locked down. A lot of restriction control, you know, like <clears throat> pretty strict. So it's strictly the way that they cannot leave the house. They couldn't leave one, once a day. They have a car that they have to somebody that a lot of government around the building, the streets, so checking the, a lot of checkpoints, checking how, like uh, the temperature, checking the, like a lot of stuff. So of course the school closed. So when I saw this, this was already happening in China. And then I was like, it, it's alarming to you. Okay, so we have to be ready because uh, when they stop the school, we stop the class, we send everybody home, and then we close the academy. And then we, we waiting for the next, we were getting ready, information, knowledge to understand. And then because of the, our network, I was talking so much with those black belts, who was overseas to see what's happening over there in the Euro, Brazil, to give us information about what is coming for, what's coming for the next. 
I'm never going to take the free will from our affiliation for our students to choose what I want to give to them. So when we reopen, they're going to be able to choose what kind of class they want to enjoy. And that's, I think, that's the that's where we learn so much with, with Jiu Jitsu, it's about respect. In the end of the day, martial arts is about respect. You know, it's about understanding the others, about like, but it, it, if, you, if, you, if you put one word in martial arts, it's respect. Martial arts is about respect. And this time, great division, not only amongst Americans, but within so much of the Jiu Jitsu community. This felt like something we all needed to hear now more than ever. Yeah, so I, so I, I look myself as like a going to the competition. You know, you have to get ready for everything. You know, so I don't, you don't know so much information sometimes about your opponent. Uh, actually, we even doesn't know when we're gonna open or how you open. You know, but you need to know what you can do, and that's like I said, everything I try to put in jujitsu in my lifestyle. So I choose to have somebody who, who is my lawyer to tell me what to do. So he's the one that uh, understand. He have the knowledge in this situation. He's the, he's the black belt in, in this. So that doesn't make sense for me be looking like breaking my head to understand if I have somebody that's a black belt in this. So I ask him, I say, hey, can you, can you help me with this? Or what should I do? What can I do locally here? I'm signal here. So what, I, what can I do? And he, he's very, he make, he make complicated things be very simple for me. He say, Leo, you cannot open right now until this date. So we are, you, uh, as a jiu-jitsu, they understand that jiu-jitsu, it uh, has to be phase one, has to be phase four. So he's, he put it very simple way for, I understand when can I open my academy. Because uh, I think that a lot of misinformation and understanding because uh, I don't believe the government really know what jiu-jitsu is. The perspective of some of people is jiu-jitsu, it's a uh, fitness. Or jiu-jitsu is just like uh, MMA. So there are different perspectives about what jiu-jitsu really are, you know. And, and, I, and I think that we are a, a lot of different things. We, are, we, we can fit in, every, in a lot of different kind of business. We adapt so much and that's I think is very amazing from jiu-jitsu. It's how adapted you can be. With Jiu-Jitsu Academies being deemed non-essential and therefore operationally illegal during this period of May 2020, I wanted to know what Leo's thoughts were on his athletes returning to the competition scene in the middle of the state-ordered lockdowns. When you have people that uh, wants to, to take uh, the risk to demand the panic pandemic to go compete you also you have to get the consequence proportional of the risk that you got because my 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 commitment is to make my school and my team safe you know so I control my mats and I'm responsible to have people who come here safe I'm I'm not a I, I'm, I'm the guy who I so in this situation like this I support be health and not supporting like you know like crazy stuff. Every jiu-jitsu instructor knows the weight of the heavy burden of responsibility that's placed upon us by the people who trust us to keep them safe on the mat. Now in the COVID era, it seems like those responsibilities are ever more daunting for both students and professors with reopening on the horizon. Yeah, you know, like sometimes it's funny because uh, you see when you first time talk about reopen, you can see, you can feel that, uh, that a lot of uh, like uh, a feeling that, uh, oh, like some people is confused about. It's not like open the business to try to be like, you know, back work and financial uh, because of financial issue. But like you, like the same protection that I want to give to my student, I want to feel I want to feel safe. Actually, like I have to be more safe than everybody else because the students are gonna be on the mat like once a day. So the professor is gonna be there three, four, five times a day. So he's gonna be the one that's gonna be connecting with everybody, you know? Of course, he's gonna protect the students, but it's to make sure that I'm, I'm gonna be the most protectful possible because 
I will have I have to teach class. I need to be healthy to be able to make to 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 teach. I have to be healthy to protect the others that was going to come into the class. And I have to be protected because I'm the one that I have family, you know. So I have a father who who had a, a lamb uh, lamb cancer. So he's a very like top of the risk of the of the risk. So I have to quarantine himself. You know, I, if I want to keep, if I want to see him, I have to be really healthy. And I know the day they reopen, I cannot see him because uh, I'm gonna put, him, I'm gonna put her, my father in the risk that that that's gonna be, you know, it's gonna affect me a lot. You know, because when the academy re reopen, I have to choose to see my father or to teach class. This really hit a little too close to home for me as I also won't be able to see my father again once I open up my academy due to him being a type one diabetic. Unfortunately, I think it's easy for most people to forget about their jujitsu professor's own situation in regards to their complexity of the decision to reopen in the midst of a pandemic. But with so much misinformation out there in the media and with so much skepticism in the community, I wanted to know if Leo personally knew anyone who's had COVID-19. I know that I family, I have a people in Brazil, that my family, they get sick. I have a friends that who die, you know, family, they die. Uh, no part of my family, but friends. Uh, I know like people in Jiu-Jitsu got sick, like even like uh, Roger Gracie, he got really sick, he and his wife, so. When all this happening, I saw that I like that are people saying that they not even believe. But like I said, like in jiu-jitsu community, like in our black belts, they, they was reporting what's happening with with locally. So and and that's and then whatever and then in China was reporting, my black belts in China was reporting exactly the same thing that Europe was reporting. The guys in Brazil was reporting was really similar. Like everybody was suffering the same thing, you know? And the reality really hit people sometimes when those uh, numbers became names. When, when the names, when you, when you can name one of that, that death, that's when you, oh my God, that's, that's, this, this is real. You know, some people they're not even like, some people are healthy by himself, they're no roommate or even like, they don't care because it's, it's a, they're strong, they're not in the, in the target. So sometimes they they just like live their own, own world. But there are people that are suffering to be alive every day. There are people with a low immunity that have, they need, they need like a survive every single day. They fight for survive, you know? So, and I think the whole, procedures is not just to protect the people's health, but to protect everybody else.